Hey everybody, welcome back to Amber and Cass Keeping It Real. I'm Amber. And I'm Cass. And this is our channel. We're talking today about all things traveling. So traveling with kids. So it's either traveling with babies, traveling with toddlers, or traveling with big kids. Um, it can definitely be a lot. So we just want to share some tips that we have learned over time of traveling with our kids. And um, I know that things are starting to open up and more people are traveling. I know I just took a little road trip and I plan on in a few months to take a flight. And so I have a few tips that have helped my son and then now my two kids to have it be smooth and easy. So we're just going to get jump right in and just share our tips. So did you want to start with the first tip? Um, sure. So I have been traveling a lot, unfortunately, through COVID. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. It's due to, you know, other things um, happening. But we have traveled to New York like four times, I think. Yeah, four times. Um, and these things have been like so life changing for us. Cause we have traveled before COVID and we were just like, uh, like hard. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so these tips will definitely help. Um, the first tip I have is obviously bring an iPad, some sort of entertainment, whatever you have. Um, make sure to download your kids' favorite um, shows, <clears throat> um, the apps, Disney Plus. Um, things like that. Most airplanes now have Wi-Fi, um, but sometimes it's not good, the Wi-Fi, especially for streaming. So I always just like download something to the iPad. Like mm -hmm. nature's obsessed with the Grinch. Like he watches yeah. it all year round. <laughs> so I have the Grinch and like a couple of his favorite um, cartoons downloaded. So that's my first one is okay. iPad, whatever you have. Yeah, I love that. Entertainment is key, especially when dealing with young kids, because that is a great way to, to distract them. Um, for my first tip, it would be um, if, for flying that you would take a, if you can, take a red eye because, you know, the lights go out, it's dark. Um, it kind of, you know, reminds them of being going to bed. So you can even have them in their pajamas so that they, you know, who cares what you're wearing to get on the flight, especially if it's a red eye. So yes. just have them in their pajamas. You know, once you get on the plane, they shut off the lights once they take off. And that's perfect because now they're they're already like conditioned to be going to sleep at that time. They're in their pajamas. They can't see anything. So they can't be distracted by other people and other things going on. Flight attendants aren't going to be walking around a lot. You know, things, most people are going to be putting on their eye masks. So for me, that was like the biggest one. If I could take a red eye, I always try to take a red eye. Um, yeah. The second tip for that same thing with the times of the flights, if you can't take a red eye, um, just try to keep your kid up for at least two hours prior to the flight. So um, that kind of gets them a little exhausted. I, I remember when traveling with my son that if we're in the car and he would start to fall asleep in the car, I would just start like trying to distract him and say, look out the window, look at the trees, look at this. Like, oh my God, we're in this car. Like we're in this bus, whatever we are in to get to the airport when we're walking in the airport. I'm like trying to distract him by giving him things, handing him things just to make sure he stays up because I wanted him to be so tired. So when he gets in that plane, his eyes are just closing and just closing. And at least I get like a good two hour nap or something, or at least the first hour of the flight, you know, maybe the takeoff and everything like that. He's just asleep. And however else your flight is, like you were saying, entertainment is definitely key. So those are my two tips for times of flying. Yeah. And also just to add on to that, um, if your child is like walking stage, definitely like let them, <clears throat> if you're, the, excuse me, if you're there a little bit earlier, let them run around, like chase them around that airport, tire them out, <laughs> let them get you know, all that energy out. You know, our kids are very, very active. We have mm -hmm. active, active boys. So mm -hmm. you know, I would just like let nature like go like this, like do laps around. <laughs> and I mean, if people look at you, they look at you, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Those are definitely some good, good tips. Mm -hmm. um, my next one is bring any medication. Don't forget medication. Um, my son, nature is allergic to a lot of food. Um that they typically serve on planes, like the nuts, for instance. So 
I always make sure to have like liquid Benadryl with me or any form of Benadryl just just in case like mm -hmm. even if he touches it or you know if the flight attendant puts it on his tray by accident or I forget to tell them or whatever it is I always bring Benadryl with me um, and I also he has an EpiPen to prescribe to him so I, I always remember to bring that just in case of any type of emergency. Yeah, that's definitely well, Tylenol. <laughs> my pediatrician, the first time I flew with him, I asked my pediatrician like what to bring with me. And he said Tylenol or Motrin, whatever age they're able to take whatever one, mm -hmm. um, because their ears can like hurt, take off and landing, which adults that happens to them too. It's happened to me before. And yeah. it is very uncomfortable. So he said just in case, like just give him the Tylenol or Motrin, like in his milk or whatever, so that if his ears do get, um, what's it called? Like, like if they're, if they're like, about to be yeah. popped, yeah, they won't pop. Yeah, then he won't like be in a lot of pain. So that's not. Yeah. I think that's a great tip bringing medicine and stuff like that, just in case, because you never know, even if your kid doesn't have allergies or you know, you just never know what they might encounter, how they're feeling, you know, just like you said, with the, the altitude. So just having that backup, like in your carry-on bag so that you can just easily get to it is definitely like a great tip. Yeah. Um, so for my um, next one, for like kind of once you are um, like in your packing for, I say more is more. So usually, you know, we want to like scale back on ourselves. Like if you're going for the weekend, you don't need 10 outfits, but for a kid, you do need 10 outfits. You know, you do need, you know, to maybe pack, you know, all the diapers that you can fit in one part of your suitcase, have them in your suitcase, have them in your bag. You know, you do need to bring um, just extra everything. So, you know, extra diapers, extra toys, extra pacifiers, just more is more, you know, um, and then also bringing things um, that, you know, are, might fall on the floor. So now you, you know, need to have, I would say have one of those little, they're called wet bags. So if you have backup toys, if you have backup pacifiers, have backup clothes, have backup everything, if something was to fall on the floor, they were to spit up, they were to have an accident, you know, you have extra everything, more is more. So put it in your carry-on, put it in your suitcase. Um, just don't scale back when you're traveling <laughs> for your kid. Just, yeah. try, you know, try to, you know, say, okay, you know what, maybe he does need three pair of pants, three pair of shorts, you know, uh, a jumpsuit, all this stuff. If we're only going for the weekend or if you're going for a week, just bring it all because you know what, if you don't have a laundry, if you don't have a place to wash things, then you're going to definitely need to have more things to change them into more bibs, just more more is more. That would be my tip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And to piggyback off of that, my next one is to have a change of clothes for the kid, of course, two or three, depending on the age, and also a change of clothes for yourself. Um, I learned that the hard way. I was, <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew to bring it, but it, it happened to me. My son was little. He had an explosion. Oh, happen. It happens. Yeah, he was on my lap and I looked down and I'm like, oh God, like <laughs> happening on an airplane on, it was an overnight flight. I was just like, great. But luckily I did pack um, an extra change of clothes for myself as well. Yeah. You know, anything can happen. That can happen, spit up, like you said, no one wants to sit there and smell like the spoiled milk, like it's gross, you mm -hmm. know, spit up is nasty, it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely bring a change of clothes for yourself both parents if both parents are traveling both parents should bring an extra set of clothes mm -hmm. definitely yeah I agree uh so next tip um would be this for like if you're staying in a hotel or you're staying you know at your parents house or at a friend's house how you know wherever you're going that you're traveling to if you're staying at an airbnb a sound machine is key because I feel like just, you just want the atmosphere to feel like how it feels at home. So bring that sound machine that you also use in the bedroom. If it's your phone, then perfect. It's your phone. But I use a sound, I think it's called Hatch. And I'm telling you, the last time I traveled and even traveling with my son, as soon as I plug that up, 
I turned on the lights, you know, even though we're kind of in a different room, we're in a hotel room, it doesn't look the same as our room. He's not in the same bassinet. Maybe he's in a pack and play or whatever type of setup you have. Turn on the lights, put on that sound machine. They're out. My son was out. He was like, oh, this is familiar. I know this, like, this is sleepy time sleep he didn't wake up he didn't feel like wake up and feel like he was in a strange place because that sound you know that what that's what keyed him in to kind of relaxing so if you have if you have a hatch or you have other another type of sound machine maybe with some lights or whatever you use bring it bring whatever kind of makes it feel like home so that they feel that home feeling you know bring those blankets bring those pillows um, that would be my tip. Definitely bring the sound machine if you have it or, you know, have an app on your phone so that the same sound that you have in their bedroom goes into wherever you're staying at when you travel. Yeah, definitely makes them feel comfortable and at home, even though they're not at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, my next one is toys, obviously. Um, like you said, bring toys, but bring their favorite toy. Um, and also I started to get like a new toy every flight, nothing crazy, just like whatever. I know that he would like, like a new monster truck or something, Mm -hmm. um, because it is new to him. He's going to be distracted by the newness of it. And, you know, he's, I don't know about Grayson, but when nature gets a new toy, he will play with that one, like he has a thousand toys. He will play with that one toy for like days. Yeah, definitely. I love that tip. Yeah, so I I love that because it really like gets them like, ooh, exciting. This is something new, like to kind of capture their attention, at least for a while. Because with old toys, they're kind of like, okay, I played with that. Like, I know the sounds that makes. Yeah, exactly. That's a great, I think that's a great tip. Just buying, even if it doesn't have to be expensive, just something new and shiny. Yeah, 99 cent store. I get like these little toy like monster trucks and he's just like over the moon for them. So I love it. One thing to avoid. Come through. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One thing I will say to avoid with little kids, I would say like two and under is like markers or crayons. Mm. My opinion, it's just like they want to draw on everything. You know, like they want to draw on the back of the seat. They want to like draw on the window or the like anything but the paper they want to draw on and then what happens the, when they get tired of it they just throw it on the floor and it goes here and it goes there and it's just like crayons or markers like everywhere so mm-hmm. something to avoid in my opinion is that crayons yeah or markers. yeah um so the next thing would be I kind of like went out of order a little bit but I would say make a list I'm making a list for me is key not only for myself but also for my son especially I'm packing not just for one person I'm packing for three people so yeah. you know just to, if I'm just like going off what comes to mind when I grab my suitcase I'm definitely going to forget something but if I make a list so if I'm like okay I'm going to need swimmers I'm going to need swim diapers I'm going to need you know flip-flops not just for me I'm going to need flip-flops for a kid I'm going to need you know something for a baby you know swim shoes I'm going to need extra diapers you know just all those things if you make a list then as you're packing you can just check it off even if it's in your phone you can just like put a little dot next to it knowing that you checked it off but for me I prefer to make the list handwritten because Mm -hmm. then I have it and I can see it and I can literally like put a line through it I enjoy that and I know there's apps that have that option to put a line through something but I don't know why I just like to make a little paper list and I like to look at it and go, okay, I did that. I did that. I packed all the underwear, underwear for everybody. Like, you know, so I think pa- making a list because that helps you even as you're, you know, packing, you might come up with another thing that you're like, oh, I didn't even think about it. What about a nice dress or a nice pair of clothes? Just in case we go out for a nice dinner, let me write that down. Or, you know, um, just things that you wouldn't think of an extra toy, whatever it is that's on the list. So now when you, you've already packed, you're ready to go. You're not like, Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot that. I wanted to bring a pillowcase or I wanted to wash these clothes so that I could have that. Just making a list will save you so much time. And so, so much where you don't have to go now buying a whole bunch of stuff when you get somewhere. But another thing I wanted to say for, if you do forget something, like don't, I don't stress about it. When I forget something, I'm just like, all right, wherever I am, they're going to have stores, right? Unless you're like, on an island that doesn't, yeah. me, <laughs> which is good for you because I want to be on the island. You know? <laughs> but 
if you're not, most places have stores. They have Target. They have something like a Target. They have a CVS. So just make a run. Once you land, once you get to your hotel, your destination, say, you know, once you feel comfortable enough, go have a little run and, you know, say, okay, these are the things we forgot. I forgot sunscreen. Let me go pick up some sunscreen. It's not yeah. the end of the world. You know, everything can be fixed. But I would say making a list has saved me um, just a peace of mind. And I most of the time have packed everything I needed. Yeah. And actually, um, the past two times that I have gone to New York, I know I knew that I was going to be there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So I just actually like went on Amazon and just sent stuff there. Like mm -hmm. I just sent like a case of diapers, a case of wipes. Um, it's it was cold at that time there. So I just like bought like a like a jumpsuit for the snow. Okay. Like, snow boots. So that way I didn't have to pack it and take it with me. Mm -hmm. That would have been like a lot of stuff to take to yeah, pack. Yeah, had a few suitcases. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just like Amazon primed it to my mother in law's house and everything was there when we got there that we like needed. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, my next one, what's my next one? Snacks, of course. I mean, I think all parents at this point know to pack snacks, even if you're going to the grocery store, you know, always mm -hmm. have a snack mm -hmm. for your kid. Um, I think my, my last one, this one I just thought about, if you can definitely spend the extra money on comfort. If if you're flying with kids, kids, you know, they get uncomfortable, you know, you start to get uncomfortable. Um, so if you can spend the extra money on like the extra leg room or whatever business class, first class, whatever you can mm -hmm. definitely do that. It's worth it. Absolutely. 100% worth it. If you can't, it's fine. You know, it, it's totally fine. But if you can, my advice is definitely just spend the extra money on it. Um, it will be <laughs> a lifesaver, um, especially for nap time, you know, things like that. Um, but also bring a lot of patience. Pack your patience in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> your patient, you have to have a lot of patience, especially with young children who they just want to get up and explore the plane, you know, especially when it's their first time flying. They're like, oh, what's this? What's that? Who are you? I want to say hi to you. Like, oh, there's a dog over there. Let me go say hi to the dog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, get up with your kid, walk up and down the aisles, you know, hold them so they're not like touching things, but like hold them, let them say hi to people, let the flight attendant, you know, interact with them if mm -hmm. the flight attendant wants to. Um, I know a couple of times the pilot has actually said hello to nature Aww. before taking off. Like he would go up there and the pilot would come out and say hi. And like, he would see like all the control buttons and stuff wow. like that. Yeah. So definitely let them explore to yeah. a degree. Um, it just gets their curiosity. You know, it's, it's their curiosity. They're little, they just want to go see. So mm -hmm. You know, and then once you let them do that, they're like, oh, okay, that's it. Cool. Like now I'm going to go sit down and chill. Yeah. You know? But yeah. The more I would say that's right. Because the more you say no, like, no, say, you can't go. You can't sit. Don't touch that. Don't look at that. Don't talk to him. Then the more they're going to want to do it, the more they're going to be like, oh, she said I can't. Well, I wonder why she said I can't. Let me try to sneak. Let me try to climb. Let me, now I'm getting frustrated. Now I'm getting upset, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't want that. You want calm, smooth flight. So you know, yeah. say yes, say yes to the walk. Okay. They already went to the bathroom. They said they have to go again. Fine. Bring oh. your wipes and go to the bathroom, wipe, whatever you need to wipe, bring your hand sanitizer. If you feel like they're going to touch something they shouldn't have touched, but mm -hmm. try to, like you said, keep your patience, keep calm. And you know, you'll definitely enjoy the flight more and they'll enjoy the flight more and you won't be all like stressed. And, and then also I would say to piggyback on that, ignore everybody. Okay, because people oh, are gonna give you dirty looks, they're gonna make comments, you know, maybe you're gonna hear someone say like, oh my God, that kid is crying or, oh, like, or, you know, giving you a look like, why are you letting your kid, you know, climb all over? Why are you letting your kid, you know what? It, I don't care. I don't know your name. You don't know my name. We don't know each other. <laughs> I can care less what you think, you know, like 
you know, you look at, look down at your computer, look down at your seat, right. like close your eyes. Your <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. So I would say ignore everybody. If your baby's crying, that's what babies do. And people get that. When you get on a flight, you don't think that you're going to be just in a flight with adults and it's going to be quiet. And it's, you know, they know that there's going to be some type of sound. You can't help, you know, what's going on around you. You know, that's why people bring noise canceling headphones. Hello, because they want to cancel the noise of the flight, you know? So don't even trip on anyone else, what they have to say, what they're looking at you. Just, you know, you paid for your ticket. You're good to go, you know? Um, people, yeah if, if they don't want to hear noise like okay boss up and fly private yeah <laughs> you know like, I think of it, like you're you are on a plane that holds I don't even know how many passengers like yeah like, like 300 said, or something like that yeah yeah if you're if you're gonna get angry and upset you know go get a pj yeah <laughs> One day I have my PJ and I'm not going to yeah. have to deal with anything, but for now <laughs> I will have my patience and I will be understanding, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I've seen people like offer to hold other people's babies. I love that. I love, love, love. I mean, yeah. not today. I don't know how like open people are today, yeah. but I know in the past people were like, do you want me to help you? You know? And I love that. Yeah. Um, I know we talked about entertainment, but I would just say like, making sure if you're, let's just say, if you have a baby, obviously you control the entertainment. So you know, you know, what your baby likes, what your baby doesn't like. If you have a toddler or a bigger kid, um, I would have them pack their bag. So like their carry on and this carry on is like, just to make them feel like they're kind of a bigger kid, you know, like, look, you get to pack your own bag. You're going to bring this bag on the plane because now they know, okay, look, I packed these little toys and I packed my iPad and I packed the Kindle, but I packed some, some artwork or whatever it is. So then when you say, okay, they sit down, they're ready to take off. This is a great way to say, what did you pack in your bag? Like, I wonder what you packed, you know? And then they, now they're taking out, you know, different things and saying, oh, this is the so-and-so and this is Mr. Whatever and Mr. Potato Head that I'm going to put the pieces together. And so it kind of like, that is another distractant in itself to like have them kind of go through the bag that they packed and kind of show you what they brought because you didn't pack it. So you don't know what's in there. You're, you, you're amazed by everything. You know, if they're not asleep and they're awake, oh, you packed that. Wow. Like, what does that do? What sound does that make? You know, and it kind of like, gets like that dialogue going and it distracts them a little bit from the plane. And if you've already done the walk around and all that stuff, now it's your turn to go through the things in the bag. So that would be one thing I would say for either a toddler or for a bigger kid. Yeah. Maybe not a 10 year old yeah. because a 10 year old probably doesn't want to talk to you, but like a five year old, like my son, he wants to talk and he likes to share. So that would be a great tip for, you know, having them interact and having them conversate and kind of to, that takes up some time that the flight is going to take. Yeah. But for me, I would say that we, I think we shared some great tips. I would love to hear your tips because like I said, I'm going to be having a flight pretty soon. I plan on doing some more road trips and I love to hear, you know, other people's input. And like Cassandra was saying some other things she said, bring extra clothes for yourself. I didn't even think about that. You know, having something that I can take off, you know, if I get spit up or poop on me, I think that's a great tip. Um, and medicine too is a great tip. Um, so I would just, I want to hear from you guys, any tips that you like to share or things that have been key for having a smooth traveling experience with your kiddos. That would be great. And just like you said, have patience, give your kid grace, you know, try to make it a fun, enjoyable experience. Cause that's what it's all about. That's what traveling is about. It's about having a good time and making experiences of, out of things. And if you want to add anything to that. No, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, like Amber said, we plan on traveling um, definitely in the summer. I know you have stuff coming up and yeah. I have something coming up too. So, you know, maybe we did forget something. So just leave us a comment um, what worked and what didn't work, you know, also give us some tips on, on things to avoid. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we're doing something and you're just like, no, we'll try this instead, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, everybody that is traveling, safe travels to you um, and enjoy your getaway, your vacation, whatever it is, your business trip, yeah. whatever it may be, enjoy. Yes, if it's on a PJ or if it's commercial or, whatever, yes. or if it's in an <laughs> RV, if it's in a car, whatever yeah. you're doing, yeah, just enjoy yourself. I know my husband wants to go on an RV. Oh, I did want to add one more thing. If you're going to have entertainment, like 
an iPad, Kindle, whatever that is, headphones. Headphones yeah. are really great because that really like brings them into whatever they're watching or whatever game they're playing. And it kind of distracts them from everything yeah. else. But yeah. Um, and we want to hear from you. Share if you have any other video ideas, let us know and we'd be happy to do them. So um, we will say goodbye and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.